please give a warm welcome to Mr. Mike Messer. Thank you very much. I was going to start by introducing myself, but um, there's something much more important that's come up talking to one or two people in this room. Um, International Times is running. It publishes every Wednesday night. It's on International Times, well, www.internationaltimes.it. Um, calling it IT as an Italian registration was a huge joke because nobody recognizes IT as being a web URL. So we have to put the www in front of it just to kind of focus people up. Okay, um, my name is Mike Messer. Um, I've been a political activist since I was six. My dad was a communist. He helped to found the state of Israel. We used to have carrier bags full of dollar bills going through our house to buy guns to shoot British servicemen. That's how the State of Israel was started. Um, I was in jail for my 17th birthday for being a member of the Commission 100. Um, I'm just going through the Wikipedia thing just so you've got some idea who you're talking about. Um, I don't know. I don't know who I am. Um, I wrote uh, a book which made me famous amongst about 12 mathematicians called The Global Dynamics of Cellular Automata. Please do not attempt to re remember those words. Um, I work for a guy called Peter Allen, who's a genius, at the Mathematical Ecological Institute called the International Eco Technological Research Institute, and it was really interesting. And I can tell you, by the way, that CO2 accounts for 0.5 of a percent of all greenhouse gases. There is some enormous goof going on in the world. Most of the radiation that occurs is water vapor. That's why England has a mild climate, because the air is saturated with water. Water takes in radiation during the day and re-radiates it during the night, just like any other greenhouse gas. It's the reason that if you go in the desert, it's freezing at night, because there's no water vapor in the air. That's just, just like, by, by the way. Um, I worked on autism, being a bit that way inclined myself, and was part of the movement that got autism changed from being a psychosis to being a modality. Um, and I started making an archive of International Times. I had a very good mate who was one of the spies for peace with me, Ian Hutchinson, and he had every single IT. And we, we went to a guy called James Moores, whose granddad invented the football pools, and who is rich, rich beyond comprehension. And he agreed that if we gave him the entire set of ITs, he would employ an archivist and have them all scanned at 600 DPI, including optical character recognition so they could be searched. And they were the beginning of the present initiative, the volume N. The reason the volumes don't have letters, uh, have numbers, don't have numbers, have letters rather than numbers, is because when Andy Lakin decided to publish the paper, he'd completely lost track of where he was at, and so he called his volume, volume question mark. And for archivists, <laughs> that is just not on. I mean, you can't do that. So we had to renumber the volumes, and we discovered that, I don't know how many letters you need to get to N, but that's the number of different groups who have published IT, and volume yeah, N. Yeah. Um, yes. Somebody did. I thought somebody said a number. I thought it was no, a genius who no, no. just knew uh, which, which the nth letter of the alphabet was. Um, all right. Um, IT is online. Not, not many people here that I've spoken to seem, seem, to, seem, seem to know that. The whole of the archive is online. The whole of the archive is searchable. And IT publishes every week. My question is. Um, where, uh, in a way, has it 
it's a difficult question. Isn't no, it? just uh, the voice. Where well, is friends. the voice these days? Yeah. The forum yeah. for people yeah. to express uh, what they're feeling to be sort of shared and disseminated everywhere well, because a, it gets so absorbed by the media now that this. Okay, this this is two big question. Two edged, two edged weapon. Um, one of the things is that it's very difficult for us because anybody can do it now for no cost. Yeah. Now. Most the people who don't do their own blog are high prestige people who would like to be associated with IT. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. Other than the fact that we've been intransigent for 50 years, um, we don't really have any other qualifications. But a lot of people, famous people, mm -hmm. have published in IT, and it seems to have some kind of cachet, whereas the people who really have got a hobby horse to ride, they'll go and have their own blog. But it is true that in the old days when it came out with you know offset litho and all of that and process cameras, yeah. that was a big technical operation. Sure. And now it's comparatively simple. IT is put together by three or four people. Yeah. There are about 26 regular contributors who yeah. contribute for nothing. Yeah. But it's not, it doesn't have the intense, it's not labor intensive like it used to be. It doesn't all have to be stuck down line by line with cow gun. And that means that this crew have lasted for two and a half years. And I don't know that any crew lasted for longer than a year. I don't know. I mean, no, people burn out because it was so... You used to have how to many work. people are on the queue next time? How many people are on the queue now? On, on, the, on, the, on the crew. There's Nicky Vitt, who mostly does the Facebook end of it. There's Claire Palmer, who does the actual posting. And I kind of... I'm non-stop. I run around at the back picking up the nuts that the... The, the Ford car has dropped. Um, but there's so, regular contributors as well. Oh, for God's sake. There's not just reg regular contributors. There are people... When I say that the work is original, there are people like David Cooper, who's a beautiful, beautiful... He paints in acrylics. I think this fair to say he's a watercolorist. Does very, very witty, very beautiful things. I guess I do not put in one of his not putting one of his things up. They're lovely. Um, there's this guy, Montgomery. This is embarrassing. You're going to have to edit some of this, because I should know this bloke's name. The graffiti artist. Um, Robert Montgomery, I think his name is. And he does incredibly beautiful situationist billboards. And he actually prints them as billboards and posts them up on billboards. And we've been running them for... Oh, we ran a series for maybe three or four months, and they had the highest hit of any one single article. And I think it's because people aren't familiar with situationist literature, and it really startles them. And to see it kind of official, because there's nothing more official than an advertisement, that, 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 that really gets to people. I think he's very clever, and we've just started to run his stuff again. And what we're doing there is that he's given us permission to use his website. He has a personal website. I'm not even sure it's open to the public. It's just where he puts his work if he needs to show if he loses his job or something. And it's his personal graphic collection. And there are one or two people like that who have tremendous collections of work that we go to regularly and take work. Otherwise it's stuff sent in. And everybody is encouraged, urged, to send stuff in. We had a bit of a hiccup last week, and we're in post. It's the first time ever. I got a phone call from New York. What's wrong with IT? Oh, Christ. Um, but we have posted again this week. The paper has been fixed. We've got a very brilliant digital technician. who's a Pakistani lad who's just brought his family over from Pakistan. He's got an MA from Birmingham University in 
computer engineering. And he handles the, the technical side. So there's another. He handles the IT for IT. Write it, have send it to editor <laughs> IT. Don't waste it on this. <laughs> <laughs> The way that we, to try and address myself to your question, the way that we feel that we can act meaningfully is by example. And that, that's the reason. This is the longest political speech that I've ever made in my life. <laughs> uh, up, up to now, the, the longest speech was, charge! And this is much longer, but I do feel that it's, it's worth it. Um, what we're trying to do is to show that you can produce a first-rate product, the sort of thing that might have advertisements for it or might be sold at a profit, etc., etc. Um, because we don't have the financial incentive, it's pure production for use, not production for profit. And it's much, much better. It works easily. It works without any sweat. And it's, it's good fun. I mean, it's great. The, the only problem is that no one gives a toss about anything anymore. So you can't get locked up. You do. Yeah, but um, I can't get locked up. Why not? I don't know. It doesn't matter what I do. I walk around the streets. I don't try hard enough. Well, I've well, well, got a pocket full of dope. I walk around the streets smoking. Um, sorry? I did. I got locked up. What for? I don't know. We never did know. We never got to know where we were. I don't 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 know yeah, um, well, you, 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 really, you, you can consider this an official invitation to join our board. Um, <laughs> if, if you can get locked up, then we can run the headline into jail. I didn't jail. like it. It doesn't matter what you like. You don't have to do it anyhow. Right, it's not it. bad, is it? Come on. <laughs> Was it bad? Well, at least ask it. How long were you locked up? Well, when, how long? Yeah. About two or three months. It's long enough. Okay. 24 hours is long enough. Um, first yeah. time I was Nick was outside the Belgian Embassy. They'd murdered Patrice Lumumba. And I was a member of a, a group called the Movement for Colonial Freedom, which had 200 stewards and no members. It was the original Redmond mob. And we went out to burn down the Belgian Embassy. And four coppers on horses just threw us away. And I got nicked, and I was in the nick with one or two other people from the MCF who were hardliners. A lot of them were soldiers who'd come back from the war and stopped Oswald Mosley reforming the Nazi party. And I was crying. I, I, I was completely shattered. Um, the humiliation, the way they treated you and that. And Stossel came over to me, put his arm around me, and said, look, it happens to everybody the first time. And you know, the 17th time. It's just business as usual. It's, yeah, I don't mind. I mean, at the moment, I really love to be locked up. I really want them to lock up the editor of IT. No way. No chance. They've got hit. They, they've understood now that war is, that propaganda war is much more important than shooting people through the head, which just means some one of your people get shot. Or cutting their heads off. Anyway... Sorry? Or stuff. cutting their heads off. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's... it's, well, it's well, you know, it's... This, war, it's, it, it's not... In Iraq? It's not Islam. Sure, no, this is just one section. The same sort of people who organise the auto da fe in Spain, that right. burn people for the good of their souls are doing this sort of thing. They're, they just have very, very poor judgment about what's useful. This is the 21st century, though. Right? Alter Never. was a few years ago. Never. I'm not going to accept a feeble excuse for that. That's society. I don't think this is the 21st century. It depends where you start counting from. <laughs>
was interested in your Somali friend who came back from Pakistan, because having been to Pakistan, that is a kind of you know, medieval society. Isn't it? It's very difficult. His, fam his dad was the headmaster of a co-educational school so, in Pakistan. They were very, very devout Muslims. And they ran this co-educational school. And I said to him, oh, God's sake, they're shooting the children from co-educational schools. What is your dad doing? And he said, I'm trying to get them out. I don't know, I mean, it's a terrible thing when... Terrible? The best, well, when the best people are driven away. Yep. When there's nothing left, but that might be the yep. imperialism's plan. <laughs> Make everywhere so bad that all the best people come from other machines. We, we, we don't seem to have a word for sort of intellectual cleansing. I mean, that may be going back to this lost left. Maybe we've been the victims of some sort of ethnic cleansing. Can I just say that I got, a, I got an email from, them, from Berlin, it's someone just, in Berlin, who just come back to Ukraine, there, just and travels a lot in the, the Russia. He used to live in Finsbury Park and was at IT, knew people from IT back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I first met him, in fact, in the 70s. He was undercover German running from the German left. Well, he was German left running from the German Please. Yeah, 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 sure. And um, oh, yeah. he's just come back from Ukraine, and he was talking about a geographic Soviet Union and a mental Soviet Union that still exists. Good, good. And that good. across the Soviet Union, and what, why Putin is being so heavy about Ukraine is because there are 36 million Russian speakers with access to Western culture. I don't think that it's... And a... he's terrified of the pollution I don't coming through Russian speakers in Ukraine into the Soviet geographic mental uh, I think that I think that's a slewed take. As far as he's concerned, there are all these Russians who have been held captive by NATO. And the Russian people overwhelmingly want to see those people really reabsorbed into Russia. Yes. Well, it's Russia or Soviet Union still. But my friend's talking about the Soviet Union. That was the interesting point I was making. That he says that there's still, there is still a feeling that it's not Mother Russia yet. It's still, it's still a socialist. It never was. Whatever. It never whatever was. It's a Soviet socialist. It never was Mother Russia. The Soviet Union's were for real. God bless you. <laughs> Can I interrupt you and sort of ask you another question, please? Um, uh, the original kind of explained about, uh, I think you sort of said that uh, the, the, somebody asked about the left and the demise of the sort of yeah. organised left, which then led you to talk about the collapse of the Soviet Union, yeah. the collapse yeah. of the Communist Party, etc. Now, my understanding is the Communist Party and that kind of ideology, everyone sort of said, well, that's Stalinism, so, so, so. But actually, Marxism, and, uh, you know, you had in the 70s, Socialist Workers' Party, Workers' Revolutionary yeah. Party, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, yeah. which, you know, gradually got weakened. We all know Thatcher destroyed all the unions, you did this, that, and the other. And now we're li living in a sort of son and daughter <coughs> of Thatcher period, basically, still. So everything was emaciating, etc., etc. But my question is that my understanding always of IT and other magazines at the time, as well as Spare Wheel and various other magazines, was that, was that essentially it, it wasn't sort of uh, allied necessarily to one political party, but it was about freedom of expression and freedom of the individual yes, and freedom of the ability to be able to say, hey, look, this is wrong, you know, this is right. And this is how, you know, we're human beings, we're all different, we all have... Even to. if two people so on all Let's get pages, back to, so I want to talk about that as aspect of IT, because that's what IT meant to me. Okay, so that's, I mean, look, so there's a great problem with IT, and what does underground mean? God knows, it was something that happened that's in France. That's the question France. I'm asking you. Yeah, it was <laughs> happened, something that happened in France during the war, and it was grossly unsuccessful, and a lot of very good people got killed, and the French Communist Party got decimated. Um, I don't know. I think what you say about freedom of personal expression, individual liberty, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I'm happy to be corrected. I, I, I to think this is uh, this is the cutting edge of debate. This is why we've we're we're here to talk about think about these things. I don't know. I mean, on the surface of it, freedom of expression, personal liberty. It sounds very bourgeois. It sounds as if one's talking about a society of yes, a society of adventurists. But the fact is that IT really is an anarchy. Well, Nobody has the right to tell anybody else what to do. And the thing functions perfectly. We have no policy statement, no mission statement. We don't have any desire to agree with each other politically. I mean, Claire, who really, really was the bulwark of the paper, the managing director of the paper, was a prominent Green. She was elected twice to the Oxford City Council as a very young woman. And I personally spit fur and feathers every time I hear about the Greens. But it doesn't stop us making IT. The, 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 the greater the variety, the more homogeneity there seems to be in IT. And it's a paradox there. There's a PhD, if anybody's... Well, I'm talking about the mission that it had back then when it was sort of well known, and the mission sort of now, is what I'm talking about. Oh, we, more people look at IT now than ever, ever did in the past. We get 10,000 hits in a week. Well, that's fascinating. I mean, look, when, when I was running Volume 4, which I was paying for, so I know the figures, Volume 1, I just sat behind Bill Levy, and a, a, a boy called Nigel Samuels, who was the heir to the Samuels jewellery fortune, um, paid the bills. And I didn't know anything about the economics. Um, but volume four, Max and I, it used to cost us about 60 quid a month, which we could ill afford in order to produce IT. And we used to run 5,000, which was the minimum number you could run. They were on a web press. They were distributed by Moore Harness, who did not give a monkey's toss. And at the end, of, it took them three months before they could tell us how many we'd sold. And they just dumped the whole issue back with us. I mean, ankle deep in unsold papers. Same with all, same with all of these magazines. You just Do you know all those guys? Which guys? But Oz and all those people, did you all oh, hang yeah, out together? Or oh, are they doing not, anything like Not hang out together because Oz wasn't political. No. We said no. Me, I did. Well done. Well, well, uh, okay, that's, that's good, yeah. Also, Oz <laughs> wasn't <laughs> legible. I thought Oz was very political. Um, I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't think they had a proof. They weren't socialists. No. That's what I mean by political. Well, I worked for Felix and he was a socialist millionaire, so he kept telling us. <laughs> well, well, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't a socialist. I think right. that prosecution rests his case at that yes. point. Well, well, Felix said he that if anybody, if anybody opened a branch of a union at his publishing company, he would shut the company down. Uh -huh. I believe that that's why he's so rich. Well, dead. You know that at the trial, the judge said that clearly he was, he was, was, he was, and, uh, he, he, he was going to be let off. Oh, oh, was and, and, and that rankled, he still went on about that. He would That's come what drove him all the years. Yes, yeah. yeah. well, no, exactly. Yeah, he, I think he, it was. He, he'd jump and drink with us in the pub. You know, it was Chief Justice Goddard. Not the end. So, I mean, you know, take what he said about intelligence of the people. So do you That's why does that one? Uh, yes. So, would you say Office. freedom of expression is an elitist activity, though, really, isn't it? I mean, freedom of expression? It is. It's yeah. something you do. Yes, it's not something you well, talk Once about. you start saying, pointing out the reality of what's around us, you get people telling you to shut up. Well, I get people telling me to shut up all the time, I just don't listen to it. <laughs> yeah, well, shut up. Well, why is it not every, well, why is it that most people don't say anything then? They don't care. Most people don't believe they, that the world has somehow slipped through their fingers. They don't believe that they matter. They don't believe that they count. They don't think that... They don't think they have any say. They, don't, they know that they don't have any say. Look, well, two everybody million, has a say, but nobody's listening. Well, two million people march past me 
standing on the corner of Parliament Square. And I stood there screaming out, sheep for peace, sheep for peace, until my good revolutionary friends dragged me away, in case the coppers noticed. I mean, <coughs> two million people are supposed to have marched in Iraq. Everybody knew it was wrong. Everybody knew it was yeah, a disaster. I don't know. Um, you get back to sort of, you, could, you have to leave the kind of, if I say Stalinist, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but Stalin had an overall view of economic development, etc. That was a practical implement, imp, implementation of Marxism, which nobody had really ever tried before. Is that and, the seven years plans? Oh, the five year plans, yes. The, 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 I mean, the five year plans are extraordinary, the idea of uh, attempting to impose. Um, now, I was going to say at the beginning of this that every now and again I forget what I'm talking about because I'm old, I've had a few glasses of wine, and I don't know what I'm talking the about. The freedom of expression, uh, whether people are afraid to express themselves, whether they feel they have any saying. They don't, they don't care to express themselves because they know very well that it doesn't make any difference. Thus, the huge march didn't make any difference. Nothing makes any difference. So, we come to a micro model that if you can't make any difference on a macro scale, you can't have world revolution, you can at least do things yourself. You can that's publish why, IT. That's why those kids are beheading people. It's, it's a sort of extreme reaction of paralysis. Yes, I think it's all of one piece. And I think that those, those kids who are beheading people are us. I think that the Israelis are us. It's all us. Um, at this moment, it's almost as if we're all aboard some juggernaut which is rolling down a hill. Um, production for profit, not for use, is a very, very distorting thing to that culture which is so moved by the things that are produced. Um, our entire lives have been revolutionized by electronics. Oh, deeply, deeply, deeply. Um, and nobody, nobody asked for any of that. Nobody voted for it. Nobody, nobody, they, people just take it because it's there. I guess you could say people are very indiscriminate in their consuming. But if you look at it from a situationist point of view, the word consuming in itself has a kind of word slave before it. Slave consumption. It's in a shop, I better buy one. Mike, I just wanted to say on behalf of the Hastings Trust, which is the host of this exhibition, and, uh, the, the, to have a legend like you turning up in Hastings is pretty good. I mean, yeah. really enjoyed it. And that actually, this sort of discussion is the sort of thing that, as far as I can see, hasn't, isn't done enough Absolutely. In the, on this coast. Makes it worthwhile for me.